Welcome to Beauty and the Biohacker, where we explore the latest tools and trends in self-care, aesthetics, and peak performance to help you live your most beautiful life from the inside out. I'm your co-host, Rachel Varga, a board-certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 19,000 rejuvenation treatments performed on thousands of patients. And I'm Katie Moore, a self-proclaimed biohacker with three years of self-experimenting in the space of health and wellness technology. I'm on a mission to help you achieve success without sacrificing your health or happiness through my YouTube channel, Katie Type A. So join us as we sit down with some of the biggest innovators in the health space, the movers and shakers of the wellness world, and unpack some of the biggest secrets in the skincare and longevity space. We are Beauty and the Biohacker, and we're thrilled to have you along for the ride. What is up, friends? Oh my gosh, this is going to be such a fun episode with Katie and I here. Obviously, y'all know we're co-hosts of Beauty and the Biohacker podcast. This is going to be a sweet episode just talking all about how to get our skin ready for fall, our fave biohacks at the moment, and much, much more. Katie, why don't you take it away? Let's get into it. Well, first of all, uh, happy 21st birthday. <laughs> I too am celebrating my 21st this week. Um, but uh, but it's all about the mindset, right? It's all about, you know, taking good care of your health. And so, yeah, September is a great month for us. Um, I always feel like with the new, with a birthday cycle, it's like, it almost is kind of like that new year vibe where you're like, I'm really excited. And it always, you know, kind of fell into that back to school time. So I always was like, I'm, I love to think about new ways to kind of upgrade my life right now. And so what better thing to talk about with the skin expert than to actually go about like talk about fall skin and how we can best prepare our skin for the changes in season. So yeah, I'm really excited for this episode. I know for me, you know, living in Hawaii right now, it's still hot, but the humidity is going down which is good. And I know where you are um, in Canada, it's going to get a little bit chillier. So what do I just out of curiosity, like I've got so many different products that I'm using right now for my skin. And I just want to know, like, do I keep using those products? Or should I be looking for something very specialized and tailored for kind of, you know, winter, fall, uh, for and fall weather? Well, lucky for you, Katie, I have sent you a care package that is going to arrive in time for your birthday next Sunday. See, this is how the world works right now. We're sending and receiving with one another. We're supporting one another. So I've actually tweaked your cleanser, your moisturizer, and your scrub, and also included one of my favorite body oils. And you guys can check out some of my fave stuff at rachelvarga.ca forward slash store. The link for my e-store is in the show notes, but for you, Katie, we know what your skin is like. You're kind of acne prone. We want to work on collagen. We got to keep the, the, the photo damage down a little bit and also work on dryness and aging and things like that. So for you, I like the idea of switching your uh, cleanser and also moving towards more of a richer moisturizer. And I've actually done that just over the last couple of weeks too. I've, I've segued from my more like acne lighter type of moisturizer to something that's quite a bit richer but now moving into fall and if you guys aren't registered for fall skin camp yet do that asap early bird registration vip is officially open at fallskincamp.com hang out katie and i are going to be in there and we're going to be sharing some of our favorite behind the scenes stuff too and really, it is a good idea to start to lean into a little bit more of the at home stuff, at home chemical peels, at home microneedling, and red light therapy and all sorts of stuff, which we're going to dive into a little bit more in this episode, but 100%, because we're not going to be outside quite as much getting the glorious unadulterated light source called the sun. And uh, so we can actually start to do a few more things to our sun to talk to it and to mitigate some of the damage from the glory days in the sun. So with sun and, and summer skin camp and all that stuff, we want to focus on, well, how can we protect it? How, what kind of antioxidants do we need to work with? What kind of sunscreens do we need to work with for the face and body? What supplements do we need to maybe talk about to reduce oxidative stress on the skin, resulting in photo damage and accelerated aging and also work as sunscreen on the inside. So as you can tell, every season, 
there are, you know, things we need to focus on. And uh, yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah. And you know, you actually brought up a great point that I think is really kind of worth digging into maybe in one of those episodes, you know, in the false uh, skin camp. And that's this idea of undoing some of the damage because, you know, we, we have been out in the sun a lot more. And so, yes, that was great. And yes, our vitamin D levels are probably sky high right now and it feels good. Right. But when you do something like get a lot of sunlight and then you go back into sort of mini hibernation mode, (laughs) you know, how do you restore that skin damage. And so I think that's definitely something to look into. And and I think something that I don't necessarily think about per se, because it's like, oh, well, I, you know, it's, you're just kind of like, you move from one season to the other, but you're like, oh, we got to undo some of the stuff like dry skin in the winter. You know, how can you take care of that before you go into the spring and summer months? So I think, you know, making sure that we're taking care of undoing some of that damage while we're transitioning into winter is definitely um, is something I got. I got, definitely got to do a little bit more research and look into for sure. But thankfully, I have you for that. <laughs> you know, it. you can bring me up anytime. And so can you guys, you guys can, you know, book time with me at Rachel Varga dossier, happy to connect. Uh, but even in the clinic, there are certain things that are kind of like off limits for the spring summer. And now getting into the fall winter, this is when we can start to correct things like sunspots and broken capillaries and all of that on the face, neck, chest, hands, the arms, sometimes even the legs as well, especially when we're kind of over age 40, the pigmentation on our arms can be kind of bothersome and also some of the creepiness in here. So this is the time of year where we're kind of going to be wearing longer sleeves. So this is a good time to start to talk to the skin off the face, neck, chest and hands and restore it a little bit because you can't really do like lasers and chemical peels and stuff like that on your arms and legs and then go in the sun right after. So that's why seasonally uh, I do these like skin updates and it's really, 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 really important. And uh, I don't know about you, Katie, but do you do like spring cleaning, fall cleaning in your home? What does that look like for you? Oh my gosh. Well, yesterday I actually went through all of like my biohacking gadgets. My best friend was visiting and she got me all of these adorable, like personalized little cases. And so I started to just go through everything because what happens is you accumulate and it goes in your closet and you forget. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have all these things I totally forgot about. I want to start using them again. They might be helpful this time of year. So I sort of organized everything and I feel like fall cleaning is as important to me as spring cleaning. I do it like, you know, almost quarterly versus, you know, twice a year. So, so yeah, I, I do it on the biohacking front, but I definitely have a closet worth of some like skin stuff I need to go through as well. So um, what does it look like for you, Rachel? Because I'm sure you've got a ton of skin stuff that you, do you put it away for next season? Do you throw it out? Like what's, what's your take? Do you put stuff in the fridge? Like, does anything go bad? I don't know. These are just random things I think about. (laughs) I am here in Canada, so it doesn't really get super hot here. And some of the actives that I work with, like retinol, copper peptides, they are in smaller glass bottles as opposed to larger ones. So by the time you get to the bottom, they haven't oxidized and gone rancid. So there's the reason for that. So you don't necessarily have to refrigerate your stuff. Sure, you can get a cute fridge and put it on your counter and take Instagram photos with it. But one of the things that you guys have probably learned about me is that I am not a sucker for the gimmicks. And I, I in fact, teach y'all to avoid the gimmicks and really just like stay on the straight and narrow. So If you were to actually look in my bathroom right now, I have this little acrylic, I I mean, I I, I should find like a bamboo one, let's be honest here, but it's easy to clean. I like being able to clean it. It's clear. I can see where everything is. And I actually, everything kind of has a place, but it's pretty minimal. So what I do is in my shower, I always have my cleanser. I got my scrub. I have my renewal pads and also my masks. So I have two different masks that I work with, one for hydration and one for acne, depending on what my skin is up to. And then for the body products, I have my body oil that I use in the bath as well to work with my Epsom salts to counteract the dryness from the salts. 
and uh, bonus points if you guys throw some Epsom, uh, Epsom salts and organic baking soda and flavored Epsom salts, really good for detox. And also the magnesium is great for bed. And then I have my self tanner products. And then for my face stuff, it's like eye cream, moisturizer, antioxidant serum, sunscreen as my basics. It doesn't have to be crazy. But you know, sometimes I'll want to use my neck cream, sometimes I'll want to use my retinol. And also monthly my my chemical peels, and then uh, a couple of times a week, the dermal rolling. So you can see how it can be like really basic with your cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen scrub, then you can add things like antioxidant serums, eye creams, neck creams, retinols, then you can add things like dermal rolling, masks, body chemical peels, monthly chemical peels. It just depends how advanced you want to do, uh, how advanced you want to go. But a tip that I can give everybody to keep an eye on your expiration dates with your products, every product will have a little like image of a container with the top up and then it'll say like nine months, 12 months, six months, right? So you do want to remember that. But as a really great rule of thumb, and I've actually sent this out in my newsletter before as a tip for everybody, when you get your products from me, take a Jiffy marker and then on the bottom of it, write the date that you opened it. And in general, you're going to want to replace your cleanser every four to six months, your moisturizer every two to three months, your eye cream every three to five months, your sunscreen every probably two months. So that can kind of give you an idea. If you're using great products that work for you, you shouldn't be accumulating all this CRAP. You should be just getting through your products and then replenishing it as necessary. And if you guys need anything, just shoot me an email, info at rachelvarga.ca and I'll get you guys hooked up with maybe some updates you need to make. Let me know what your skin's up to and I'll help you from there. I really do like very lovely concierge one-on-one. -on -one. I'm in my in inbox helping you guys out, but it shouldn't get too crazy uh, in regards to what you have. And if you feel like you're overwhelmed, this is a good sign that you could really benefit with some guidance. But doesn't it feel good to just keep things like cleared out and not cluttered? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I do the same thing with my supplements too. Uh, there are a lot of supplements in my closet still. You know, I just from accumulation you try one thing and then you're like ah, I don't know if I felt this so maybe I'll try it again and it is so important I think at least two maybe three times a year look at those expiration dates figure out is this thing still shelf stable did it when did I open it I and I do mark down when I open things because it could be sitting there for months and then it's and if you live in a hot climate chances are you know it might not be as efficacious Hey friends, Katie here, and I want to tell you about a new health product I'm low-key obsessed with. It's called Few, an all-natural essential oil inhaler that's safe and easy to use pretty much anywhere. Each wooden inhaler is handcrafted in Canada, and since there's no smoke or vapor involved, it actually helps preserve the natural state of the essential oils. So you get the full benefits of aromatherapy much faster than your standard diffuser. Now, I am personally a big fan of their peppermint cores before a workout, and the bubbly lime cores are amazing for a little boost of energy throughout the day. And of course, if you want to learn more about Fume and all their products, you can head over to fumeessential.com and use code BNB10 for 10% off your order. That's the ampersand B10 for a special 10% discount just for podcast listeners. The other thing I wanted to bring up with you, Rachel, is I think which sort of, um, you know, has been something I've experienced, a couple members of my family and friends have experienced is really dry hair and dry skin in the fall and winter. My sister gets eczema. We've talked about this. Uh, I tend to get really dry and flaky skin around the fall and winter months, depending on where I'm living. So what should people be swapping out their shampoos? Should they be looking into, you know, doing something that will help restore some of the moisture in their scalp and their face? And I feel like she's she's got some products she's uh, she's going to show us. This is exciting. Heck yeah. I mean, I, I have some things here that are really important, I would say, for the fall right behind me. And I'm just going to reference a couple of them. So y'all know I got like a head of hair for two, three people. And <laughs> it's very thick, unruly, curly hair. I got made fun of a lot. 
as I was growing up, uh, because it was so curly, you know, people would say, would you Rachel stick your finger in a light bulb socket? I kid you not. I would get teased so hard. And I just had a blow up for my birthday. So it's a little straighter today, which is it's fun, you know, treat yourself every now and again. But I do like to rock the curls lately and not heat style my hair. And in fact, it's actually helped my hair stay blonder. So for all of you blondies out there, if you find that your hair is getting a little bit brassy, look how much you're heat styling it. And I think I heat style my hair like only when I go to my, my hairstylist now, which, which is awesome. So one of my favorite products is actually, uh, it's a hair oil. It's called the Hallelujah Hair Oil, which is such a cute name. Actually, one of my clients, Emily, makes this product. So one of the cool things about uh, the online space is I actually end up featuring a lot of my clients and their products on my e-store and on the podcast, which is so cool. Like this is how life is now, guys. Uh, I love this hair oil. So what I'll do is I'll just put it in my hands and then I'll run it through my hair. I'll kind of put a little bit on my hairline and then also from like the mid down and then I'll comb it through. And then at nighttime, sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a little spray bottle with like a little bit of my favorite uh, rose essential oil that you guys can get from me and I'll dampen my hair, I'll comb it out. And then I like to use wet brushes so that I'm not um, breaking my hair because if you want long hair, you have to take care of it a certain way and then I'll just braid it and then sleep in it and, and it's super easy. And then I wake up and I have like this like god ass curly hair <laughs> and all I used was a freaking super clean hair oil. It's also great for your hands too. And uh, for the body, you definitely got to stay on top of your body hydration. So if you are noticing like creepiness on your arms, you can pick up my uh, Dermalac lotion. It's a body chemical peel from the e-store. Uh, the pineapple oil is fabulous too. I'll sleep with that uh, chemical peel on my body or I'll put it on while I'm cleaning the house. I'll throw a face mask on. So if you're dry, doing your face mask is great. Doing a hair mask, doing the body peel, but making sure you're exfoliating. So mm -hmm. if say I'm doing some client support over email and one of my clients emails me and says, hey, Rachel, loving everything you're giving me, but my skin is a little bit dry. The first thing I'm going to want to ask is how frequently are you using the vitamin serum or the retinol from me? And if you're using it like every single night and you're using, whoops, and you're using it too close to the eyes, you're going to get dryness and eye irritation. So with your retinol, which is usually a culprit for dry skin is try to just do it like Monday, then Wednesday then Friday or just start with like Monday and Friday and take a bunch of days off in between and make sure that you're exfoliating because what retinol does is it kicks up your cell turnover, which is what the flaking can then uh, result in. So keep the skin well exfoliated. So do your scrub two to five times a week, use a richer moisturizer that I can set out for you and then dial back on your retinol for now and then start to reincorporate it. So those are like dry skin tips 101 but yeah you gotta usually switch things up for the fall winter because we go more a little bit indoors with dry indoor heating and stuff yeah the air quality changes for sure it's like you're not outside as much and then you're inside it can be stuffy when you put the heat on and so yeah i, I automatically notice a change now what about sunscreen do do you still recommend that we do you know the tizo or you know at least a face sunscreen every single day and is it, you know, if you're not getting as much sun, do you do you really need to go overboard? Before I talk about sunscreen, I do want to give a shout out to some supplements. So mm. if you're watching this, you just saw me take a whole mouthful of supplements. Omegas are really important for skin hydration. So you guys can go to my e-store, just look up um, Omega Renew and Protect. You'll find one of my favorite formulas there that actually has Health Canada approval for being able to reduce skin uh, oxidation, uh, free radical, brightening the skin. It's actually pretty cool to have Health Canada say that. So I did want to give a shout out to Omegas because the EPA, DHA, uh, GLA, vitamin D3, lutein, and a few other things, and barrage oil are all really important for the cell membranes of your skin. Staying well hydrated, really important, but making sure you drink the right water, so filtered water, charge it with your somavetic, your arc pendant, things like that. So sunscreen, uh, that's a non-negotiable. You have to wear your sunscreen every day that ends with a Y. No, I'm not 21, I'm 35. 
<laughs> and you have to wear your sunscreen every day. So depending on what consistency you like, say you like your moisturizer in a sunscreen, you like more of like a dewy finish or a matte finish. That's something that I'll kind of work out and recommend when I cons when you consult with me on a one on one. One on one for me, I really like more of a matte look because I tend to get a little bit oily with my T zone. Um, but I also like my sunscreen to act as a primer so that I don't have to use a separate primer. And I also like my sunscreen to have some added antioxidants. So the Tizo on my site store is hands down my favorite. The tinted's great. The untinted is also fabulous. And the one for the face and body is also uh, amazing. It's actually very hydrating as well. So my clients like to use that one on the face too. It is face and body. But one thing I really like about that sunscreen is that it's a purely mineral sunscreen filter. We're not talking about some of these other medical grade brands that have mineral sunscreen mixed with chemical filters. I see it all of the time because when I meet with clients, I go through the products they're using and I look at the ingredients with them live on the call. And I, oh my gosh, there was something that a client brought forth that they were using from a really big store that's black and white. I'm not going to say the name of it. It's like their flagship brand moisturizer. Mm -hmm. I could, you probably know the brand, right? Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. It's like black everywhere. and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, they they are really good at, at pretty packaging. I'll tell you that for sure. And they use yeah. the, you know, I think the thing too, is you walk into one of those big box stores and, it, and, and they have a fall section and they have a winter section and everything says peptides and organic and natural and all of the, it's just BS guys. Like you got to turn that label around and you got to read the ingredients. You can't just look at like what it says on the outer shell, right? It's like, a lot of this, it takes time and it's, it can be frustrating too, because you want to just go in quickly, grab something that looks good, is a good price point and go, but you got to sometimes just take five minutes or do it online. Like you don't have to be in the store physically look online and then don't just read the reviews of people who've used it. Like go a lot to of the yeah. site. Yeah. And see like, have they done testing on this? Like, do they test out animals? you know, what, what are the ingredients? And then like, if you shoot Rachel a quick email, like, you know, set up a consult and actually go through this stuff because it will educate you. It's made me so think about my, you know, relationship to creams and, and moisturizers so differently now, because yeah, your, your skin is, can be like a Petri dish, right. For just all these toxic chemicals. And well, your body can your toxic load can get over full. And then yeah. guess what? That bucket's going to tip over. You're going to get sick. You're going to have hormone disruption. So this moisturizer, I've never seen such a long ingredient list. Mm -hmm. And an ingredient was BPA, BP freaking A. You guys know about plastic, how it all has Wait, to be BPA free. That was BPA an, was an ingredient. ingredient. Yes. So that is a known endocrine disruptor, hormone disruptor is correlated with things like breast cancer mm -hmm. and it's an ingredient. So I'm looking at this product. I'm like, okay, this whole product line is probably just industrial manufacturing byproducts. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I understand that there are a lot of companies out there trying to create, you know, like really elegant looking packaged products, but like, oh my gosh, it, I would rather them put that money into research and development into science backed products. It doesn't have to be glitzy and glamorous. And, you know, I don't care what the color of the bottle is in my shelf. Like it's so, we are just, yeah, I know. I, I, I feel like we could go down a rabbit hole of like how this is very indicative of like everything in society and everything that's marketed to us. But yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with like cereals, right? Like things that look beautiful on the box and they've got all these colorful marshmallows, but you read the ingredients, you're like sugar cane. Okay. Do I want to eat this for breakfast? No. You got to think about your sunscreen. You got to think about your oil. in the same way. Stop eating garbage oils. Yeah. It's like you, I think there, there's also a very like 
strong relationship that people don't necessarily think about. But I know you you obviously understand this, Rachel, being in this trade for so long is that what you what you put in your body is almost as important as what you put on your body. You know, they do go hand in hand. So very, very important that you're reading labels across the board for everything, not just like the nutrition label, but the ingredient label matters too. Um, so yeah, that's devastating and disappointing to hear. And it's sad that people aren't talking about this. Instead, they send it to an influencer who posts it on Instagram and then, you know, everyone buys it. Right. So uh, just a word for the wise, you guys are smarter. You guys are conscious consumers. Don't buy into the hype and the BS bottom line. Yeah. It's just crazy. And we interviewed Wade Lightheart, the, um, co-founder of bio-optimizers who's talking to us all about white label supplements mm -hmm. and the same thing goes with skincare it's like you could find like a derm or an influencer selling their own skincare line and they could be selling it for one to 200 bucks and it's the same formula that's on the drugstore shelf so you would know you have to know right now i would never do that uh, I will be working on formulating my own line. It's a lot of work, but right now I work with 13 brands that I've worked with for about 10 years. I, I like their business practices. I like their products. They give great results. Uh, so we'll get there, but it's, it's kind of a, a big, a big thing uh, to do that. So yeah. What, what, what should we talk about next, Katie? Let's talk about what we're like, I think one of the big kind of questions that people have is like, okay, so if I'm not getting the same amount of sunlight, what can I do to supplement that? And I think there's a lot of really great products that have come into the fold right now that can help you with, you know, getting your um, adequate amount of, you know, vitamins and, and feet and also like mentally, like think about what the sun does for your mental health. Right. So there's that ripple effect. I know you've been using the Juve. I've also been using the Juve. I love it. I am still trying to figure out how I am going to quantify it for a product review, but like, stay tuned for that. Um, right now though, like it, that's kind of the thing I do first thing in the morning and right before bed. When we talked to Wes from Juve, he said that it actually helps prime your body to be better at absorbing vitamin D when you go out on the sunlight. So doing that first thing while I'm kind of just doing my morning exercises around the house is great. And then after my sauna at night, you know, I don't sauna every single night, but like a couple times a week, I will, before I you know, shower and basically clean myself off from all the sweat. I let my body continue to detox, sit in front of the juve. And from there, I'm moving from like the sort of your, your heart rate is elevated. You're in this high stress environment of the heat shock, right? From being overheated. And then you slowly start to cool down. And then that's where something that is, you know, supposedly has anti-inflammation benefits can really come into play. So I like lay in front of my juve, put it on my face, sort of let my body still sweat. And then I jump into a cold shower. And that's been my routine for the past, I'd say month or so. And it's, it's really relaxing before going to bed. Yep. I will echo that red light therapy before uh, going to bed. When I wake up, I have mine in my bathroom. So it's really convenient for me to get it. Cause I mean, sorry, I say this, you gotta be naked to actually get the benefits of it really. So in the bathroom, it's private. I can just lock the door and I'm sure my neighbors see my red light every night. I'm like, what the heck is going on there? Are they vampires? But y'all know it's biohacking, but I had my birthday party last night. And it was biohacking themed. And I really miss you there. I actually had a whole bunch of the awesome people from Upgrade Labs here in Victoria at my birthday. It's oh, like cool. just hanging out and having a great time. Chris and Jen brought their pemp mat. I had both my red lights outside. So I had my brand new uh, 3.0 Juve. It's huge. And then my old mini uh, in the gazebo. So I was set in the mood uh, because one of the things that I want to encourage you all to do is to change out all of your LED lights from your home. So if you've ever been at like an outdoor gathering and they have these like LED patio lights or any of the lights that are on like the side of the house to illuminate what you guys are doing or you're outside at a restaurant, a lot of the lighting is, is LED. So I had all my jubes going. So yeah, we had to like run around and put it back on with the timer. But I felt so good. And I had a little fire going. We were cooking over the fire. It was like super primal biohacking. It was, it was carnivore biohacking theme. You would have loved it. 
I, I, man, <laughs> oh man, if times were different, I would have booked a one way flight there and I probably wouldn't have come back. But truth be told, like that, that sounds amazing. And, you know, the, we just traveled to Maui this weekend and they, it's funny because like light actually came up as, as an issue here in Kona, you know, on the big island, all of the street lamps, if you guys have ever traveled to Hawaii, are orange. It's very bizarre. And we went to Maui and like they have, you know, it's it's not terrible, but like definitely it is much more built geared for tourists driving at night. So like the street lamps are brighter and like every place has all of these crazy LED patio lights that are so bright that you feel like it's daytime, right? And that definitely can mess up your circadian rhythm guys. So one thing that I would say going into the fall is, you know, clocks go back or forward or whatever it is, but basically the sunlight goes down earlier, right? It's un it's unfortunate. I love an eight o'clock sunset, but it's going to be more like five. Make sure you're still seeing that sunset though. Don't wait until eight o'clock, you know, and then be like, oh, maybe I should now turn off my device. Like, go see the sunset that's going to start getting your melatonin regulated, kind of you're, you're going to start secreting the melatonin, getting your body prepped for the evening. Make sure you're switching out your light bulbs, start using the red lights, like maybe seven, eight o'clock at night, dim your screens. There's so much free software out there, guys. It's crazy. Like Iris tech, you can install. Where dot locks. Glasses. I like F dot locks. That's, that's free. a great one too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so many of these things are really cheap or almost free. And it's just a great way to protect your eyes because that, that to me is like the, the, one of the biggest factors, light is one of the single most biggest factors in helping me fall asleep. So get that stuff dialed in, in, in the fall so you can actually sleep better, which is then going to help you function better the next day. <laughs> Yeah, there was a difference between my new 3.0 Juve and my old school Mini. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, and all of us were like, okay, what's the differences here? Because I had them outside illuminating the yard. It was freaking awesome. And a little That's fire, amazing. and like it was kind of like a little bit smoky. It was so cool. It was like magical. And the old school Juve to look at is like, holy smoke, something is bright. And the light gets really diffused. But with the new one, it was actually a lot easier to look at. And the light was very coherent. It was almost like a laser beam. That light traveled so far. I couldn't believe it. So there is definitely a noticeable difference in the type and quality of the of the light in, in those kind of uh, anecdotal metrics that I shared with you. Yeah. I mean, even like something, I mean, I have the sunlight and sauna. Absolutely love it. Oh, I love it, sunlight and sauna. So good. Love It It comes with chromotherapy, but the light is no, nothing close to what you get from a targeted device. Right. So, you know, just things to keep in mind, like, yes, do I think it's nice to have red light? Do I feel super sexy in my sauna when I have my red light going? Do my neighbors think I'm crazy? Pro the answer to all of those is probably yes. Um, but, you know, is that going to be sufficient to, you know, consider that my red light therapy for the night? Probably not. That's why I would say maybe look into something. It doesn't have to necessarily be Juve. I personally think Juve is definitely the best, like now after having tried a lot of them. But, you know, if it's not in your budget, totally fine. Dave has, you know, True Light and there's a bunch of other just don't buy it on Amazon, but they're, you know, look into a reputable uh, company. Uh, I would say True Light is probably the second best and theirs are a little bit more affordable and they even have different like um, mechanisms in which you can get the red light. Like I sent my sister a pillow that has red light built in because she just had knee surgery. So I was like, this is brilliant. Like you have knee surgery. I was like, red light could potentially help that area. So she sticks a pillow under her knees at night and uses red light there. That's great, right? So much more effective. So think about that too, you know, and just make sure that you're getting a reputable product that they've done their research, their science. And I think the one thing that Juve has above all else is like their research and development. They're pouring so much money into that team and they're really taking red light to the next level. So that's my closing words for today. That's awesome. And you guys can find all of our favorite stuff on our favorites page on our website. So you guys can just check out in the description box here. But yeah, this the sunlight and handheld one is a great affordable option. I like that one for headaches. My previous Juve Mini, I'd use that thing literally every morning and night and it's still going strong. 
Um, the cool thing with the new one is that the fan isn't quite so loud. I know. It's quite a bit quieter and you don't have to wait for the fan to kick off and then turn the power switch off. So they definitely yeah. fix that. You pay for what you get. And we're here to keep you guys on the straight and narrow and be brutally honest with this biohacking stuff, the anti-aging stuff. And uh, shout out to our show, Beauty and the Biohacker. Learn about Katie and I at beautyandthebiohacker.com. You can also book one-on-ones with both of us for myself for skin optimization at rachelvarga.ca and for Katie for your biohacking stuff. And uh, sleep optimization. And <laughs> sleep optimization. Heck yeah. At katietypea.com. It's all in the show notes. You can learn about both of us. And yeah, by uh, the way, I was the one who told Kim Kardashian to get the aura ring. So I don't know why everybody is like freaking out that she has one. I was like, Kim, you need to get this girl. Dude. The babes of the future are going to be the biohackers. And you coming here and hanging out with us are an early adopter. And you guys. we are early adopters. We're all going to just age like Jane Fonda minus the three facelifts together. So let's have fun and look fab in the process. I'm glad I made you laugh. I love you. <laughs> that was amazing because I hate doing the Jane Fonda workout during my Pilates classes. The but that one. just, I will always think about that now when I do it. You're amazing. Love awesome. you guys. It was so Love you guys. Yeah, Be you. sure to subscribe to the channels here. Rachel Varga Official, Katie Type A, Beating the Biohacker. Give us some love. Follow us on social and reach out for your one-on-ones with us. Love you lots and see you in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning into Beauty and the Biohacker today. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a comment or share it on your social media account and we'll give you a shout out. And don't forget to head over to beautyandthebiohacker.com to check out all our episodes and our favorites page where we include our curated list of products with special discount codes just for you guys. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter because we're sharing some exclusive content and giveaways ways you won't want to miss.